Welcome back everyone, it's up to Steve. Today we are going to break down chapter 326 of Hero Killer Stain's confrontation with All Might, which Horikoshi has been teasing us since 317. In naughty, naughty. Throughout this arc, My Hero Academia has explored the true nature of what makes a hero a true hero. Society in Japan went through one of the biggest shifts from constantly being saved by the epitome of a true hero, All Might, to now being cornered and pushed into safety facilities fearing for their lives. Now more than ever, the true value of what makes a hero is being questioned. And this all comes back to chapter 326, where now All Might is the one that needs to be saved. But the one who saves him is not Deku, rather it's Hero Killer Stain. Nani? Okay, okay, with that let's get right into the chapter. We start off back with All Might, who is patrolling around the areas that anti-hero supporters reside in after refusing to evacuate. During his venture, All Might can't stop thinking of what happened back in chapter 317. The regret of not being able to stop Deku and get him to take a break still lingered in his mind. Let's be honest, if you made a 10 out of 10 bento for someone and they disrespected you like Deku did to All Might, even you would be heartbroken. All Might then finally come across a piece of Deku's mask which is laying on the floor all broken. He remorsefully then looks into the distance and notices his vandalized hero statue, reading the sign, I am not here. A ironic counterpart to his famous catchphrase. He scoffed at the sign, berating himself for being a hypocrite, always saying he would be here but couldn't do anything when the student was struggling. He refers to the statue as you rather than I, showcasing that All Might no longer sees himself as the hero All Might. He's now just Toshinori Yogi. All Might became griefed with the feeling of guilt and powerlessness, being unable to help anyone and now feeling like he has become a burden rather than the support pillar he once was. At that moment, a blade is suddenly being held against against All Might's neck, the blade belonging to none other than Stain. He happened to hear All Might's monologue and literally tells All Might to take back what he said as his blasphemy against a great hero. Like I don't care what anyone says, Stain is the real MVP. He was simping for All Might before Deku even bought his very first merch. <laughs> like damn, I ain't gonna lie, I wish I had a simp like Stain. But seriously, Stain demands that Yagi retracts his statement against All Might, who we know Stain holds the most admiration for, claiming that he is the only true hero in the world. But All Might, without even flinching, looks back at Stain, stating that they had never encountered each other whilst he was an active hero, and never thought that their first meeting would be in a situation like this. Stain looks at him confused, asking what is he talking about, unaware of All Might's true form. But honestly, are you really a true simp? How does Stain not know? Know All Might's true form. He must be chatting shit. Everyone saw this form on TV, YouTube, everything. The whole world knows about this form, y'all. Like is body me pura dunya janti hai. This shocked me so much it sent me back to India. <laughs> but seriously, guys, after breaking out of Tartarus, why didn't my man check out the ABD YouTube channel to find out how All Might's doing? No, no, is it just me? Stain clearly doesn't have the notification bell on. Shame on you, Stain. But wait, there's more! Okay, but coming back to the chapter, Stain is in complete disbelief about his claim, stating that there's no way someone like him could be All Might, calling him a complete sham. That's when All Might realized that Stain probably had not seen his form after being imprisoned. So to prove his identity, All Might briefly changes into his form, but Stain still can't believe it, which is understandable. As far as he's aware, someone could be just copying All Might's figure with a quirk. But for real, I still believe Stain knows this is All Might, but because his spirit as as the hero is gone, Stain no longer recognizes him as the true All Might that he once idolized. Also, this might be his way of telling All Might how far he has fallen from what he once was. Not to berate All Might, but to make him recognize on who he was and why he was a true hero. Stain confronts the so-called fake All Might, saying how this palace is a place to commemorate the true hero and how dare All Might try to impersonate him, which is when All Might self-reflects on these words, agreeing that he is a fake and not a true hero whilst looking down at the part of Deku's costume he picked up. All Might reflects back to the time when he was a young lad with no quirk. He talks about how he couldn't sit back and accept the madness in society which kept taking from people. Despite being powerless, he wanted to save and make the world a better place. We can see in this panel here that All Might is paralleling Deku. When he charged in to save Bakugo from the beginning despite being quirkless. This is why All Might was a true hero and still can be a true hero because his intention truly did mean to bring about 
change. This actually parallels the current era and society and shows that even since back then, the world has been creating its own villains, which is why Deku's goal is the same as what All Might was trying to accomplish to make the world a better place, saving everyone from this madness. Deku even tries to go further and beyond and we know this through his need of saving Shigaraki as he mentioned back in chapter 295. And again, despite society viewing Shigaraki as the bad guy, Deku still wants to save him regardless, as now he knows the key to create a better world is to find the true source of its issues. And this is what made both All Might and Deku true heroes in the words of Stain, because unlike the rest of the world who views everything as simple, black and white, good and evil, those two both understood that the world is in fact shades of grey. It's neither one or the other as we see in Deku's fight with Lady Nagant back in chapter 314. However, All Might feels as though he reached his end before he could complete his goals, which resulted in the world we see today. But the thing is, it wasn't just losing his quirk and feeling completely useless that made All Might cynical of his existence, rather it was his realisation that he wasn't able to help the person close to him being Deku against his internal problems. Even though All Might was prepared to die for Deku to save him from any external danger, he couldn't stop Deku and tell him to take a break to mentally recover. This action did not require All Might to have any quirk, rather he needed the will to fight Deku with his spirit and words. This lack of action from All Might's behalf is making him question his worth as a hero and for some reason he's associated that to his now lack of quirk and physical state he is in. The reason All Might has fallen so low to become a butler isn't due to his lack of power, rather is due to his loss of spirit. We can compare this to Mirio. When he lost his quirk, Mirio didn't let that change his hero attitude, rather he became Eri's support and mental cushion, something which All Might tried to be for Deku. Even throughout All Might's prime, what made him a true hero wasn't his broken ass quirk but was the smile he carried every time he saved others. All Might's attitude and spirit became an inspiration for others. Even though he was saving people from external threats, he healed the internal problems by becoming this ideal support. That's I am here. I am here. <laughs> This resonated with those who were scared, lonely or even hopeless. All Might shattered those feelings with his smile and forceful confident attitude. Dane understands that is what made All Might a true hero and is trying to remind him of it. But now I'm going to pass it on to Harrison who will be taking over explaining exactly how Stain will inspire All Might to once again take on the mantle of a true hero. Yes I shall, thank you Yusuf. So All Might begins to question how he got to the point he's at now where he keeps straying further and further from the hero he once was, which is when Stain jumps in to grab All Might. All Might believes that it's an attack, but he sensed zero bloodlust this entire time, which is when a civilian shows up at the All Might statue to clean the vandalism and pay her respects. Stain says how she comes by every day from a nearby shelter to rectify the damage caused by the anti-hero community to keep the peace in her shelter. All Might wonders who such a person is that they'd put themselves through so much danger which is when Stain reveals it's actually the last person All Might saved. We can see her back in chapter 92 during All Might's final fight versus All for One during the Camino incident where All Might takes an attack aimed at her. Stain explains that All Might isn't a hero because of his quirk, but because he'd always have a smile on his face, set out to help others and provide a sense of hope to those who needed it. Which goes back to what we've been saying lately that a hero in My Hero Academia doesn't have to have a super powered quirk, save an entire city or defeat a big baddie, but instead help those around them no matter how big or small it may seem. As we've seen recently with the civilians giving Deku a chance, this choice of theirs and acceptance will eventually spiral towards Deku becoming the number one hero, which is just as heroic as the number one hero himself as without this specific action he may have never existed in the first place and instead had been exiled, which only continues the cycle of the My Hero Society of creating their own villains through selfish desires and ostracising those who don't fit in. Stain explains that the man known as All Might, notice how we used man here and not hero, like I mentioned even the most normal of people can be a hero, even even an ordinary man or woman. Anyway, he mentions how he was the man dedicating his entire life to preserving peace and that the All Might in front of him doesn't hold a candle to the true All Might. However, Stain says that the end of All Might has not resulted in this current world because All Might isn't over, as he forcefully turns his head to watch the woman pay her respect. 
the embers which All Might left behind continue to burn in the new generation and that, oblivious to rain or wind, they are forming into a roaring blaze. Which means that no matter what gets in their way, this new generation is continuing to push through and create a better world, surpassing their limits. As Stain says, it's important that flame must not die, and it must continue to burn for as long as they live, which is Stain's way of saying that it must be passed down generation after generation to create a just society. All Might sheds a tear after seeing the lady still showing her belief in All Might. Stain says to him that a hero can only claim that title as long as his soul burns fiercely in the service of others. However, say a god has fallen, prostrate upon the earth, and his divine soul has turned feeble and mortal. This shocks All Might as he catches on that Stain has been watching him for a while, as this quote from Stain is a nod back to chapter 317 where he witnessed Deku leave All Might behind when All Might stretched out to hold on to Deku but instead fell face first into the dirt. In the end, Stain tells All Might that he doesn't know who he is, but if he is a true hero then use that information from Tartarus to end him, as he throws a knife to the ground with a note attached. Now firstly, although we don't know just yet exactly exactly what that information is, we have this panel here from chapter 94 after Ulf 1 was sent to Tartarus. It's a rather large panel and not just some throwaway reaction shot, which means it likely holds some importance. However, up until now we've never really seen why Stain looks like this during Ulf 1's inauguration to the prison. However, we now know that he has information nobody else does, which may in fact be a secret he learned about Ulf 1 during his time in jail. And secondly, it's highly likely that throughout this chapter Stain actually knew he was talking to All Might this entire time. It's more likely that Stain claimed he was a fake All Might because the current state he is in resembles nothing of All Might and this entire chapter was in fact Stain's pep talk to light that fire in him again and continue being an inspiration for the next generation of heroes. Another bit of proof proving this was when he told him to kill him, throwing him a knife. Back in chapter 56, Stain said that the only hero that could kill him was, you guessed it, All Might. So the fact that Stain was inviting this from him shows that he knows he is All Might really. And then right at the end of the chapter, the lady notes how the rain is stopping and we can see the cloud is clearing up with the sun breaking through. This symbolises that Stain's words have resonated with All Might and cleared his mind and the light will begin to shine through once again giving life back to All Might. Stain giving All Might this pep talk in a way is him saving All Might from his despair and by showing the effects All Might had on other people is a reminder to who he is, to fix up and become the true hero he once was. Giving All Might the note with the secret information on All For One showcases that even behind the facade of pretending he doesn't know who All Might is, Stain still respects him enough even at the state to choose All Might to be the one who receives Stain's information. This relationship between Stain and All Might goes far beyond any simp. Stain doesn't worship All Might as an idol, rather he sees him as a person who also needs help when he is low. Hopefully going forwards we will see how much information Stain gathered against Orf 1 in the coming chapters. But for now make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe and check out the merch in the description down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this chapter in the comment section, just how sick is Stain? Oh man, I love my guy. Anyway that's enough from us, we'll be seeing you guys next time.